Good day, everybody. Welcome to the next edition of the Sports Fanatic News Philadelphia Phillies shows. We're here to actually talk about the Phillies finally, finally, finally playing some freaking good baseball. Um, as they are on a winning streak now, Gibby's looking good to start this game. Hopefully we don't jinx it and have them blow it with the freaking bullpen. But right now, as we're recording, this is 6-0 in the top of the third. It's nice to have Shane on again. We used to do the Always Next Year podcast. It's been a minute, so how you doing? Uh, I'm doing well, man. It's been a while since I talked to uh, to a lot of my old hosts, so it's uh, it's nice to catch up. Nice to be on your show. Yeah, it's always nice to talk to uh, you guys in general. I love um, – it's always fun to debate and talk on Twitter um, with everybody because everybody, it's fun how everybody can watch the same exact shit and see completely different things because that's exactly what sports is. Everybody watches the same shit but sees different things, and that's why covering and doing podcast for sports is so much fun because you're never going to have the same two – things unless if it's designed to just be boring like those shows that are boringly designed where everybody just has the same goddamn opinion that suck yeah then that's one thing but like otherwise um usually there's disagreements or at least not the same opinion but going off of that note when it comes to the phillies this year struggling early what do you think their biggest downfalls were to struggle early before we get into the success of the current day of the last seven games what do you think their biggest like if you want to give a few or just a couple main downfalls what their biggest would be um you know it's i know it's not this the sexiest thing especially in philadelphia to you know to put put all your eggs in one in one basket but you know i think at this point you know guys just weren't put in positions to succeed um you know a lot's come out over over the last six eight days since uh since girardi's departure um about former players uh you know who really did not appreciate his style of management his style of communication um you know there have been reports coming out that uh nick castellanos has spoken to him three times uh since the time that he has you know signed in philadelphia which is unreal to me um you know and i just think that when you have a disconnect between the person who's steering your ship uh and then the players who are uh kind of making a move um you know this is this is kind of what you get so i think you know, it, it's obviously players were underperforming. Um, you know, the bullpen was another kind of a patchwork, you know, kind of hope and pray type of thing. But I think you can really put a lot of this season, um, at, you know, up until, you know, about a week, week and a half ago at this point uh, on the failures of, of Joe Girardi. Yeah, I think there was a lot of times you would look at the starting pitcher and go, he probably could have went one more inning or uh, he probably should have came out an inning less like he did that multiple times, whether it was with Eflin, which I can remember two times he did it with Eflin or Nolo or whoever, he would leave him in one extra or take him out one too early. Where it seems like Thompson, now granted, it's only seven games or whatever, six seven games, but it seems like so far he's not being so jumpy, and he's kind of just letting things play out, kind of using the old school mentality combined with some of the new school mentalities more than Joe kind of just seemed to start just using analytics sometimes and it didn't make any damn sense some of the moves you well, make sometimes I, I don't know that it, that it was always you know 100 percent analytics with with girardi um you know i i just i don't know that he ever really had a real rhyme or reason for anything um you know there there just seemed to be I, I there just seemed to be such a disinterest from girardi uh especially this year maybe not so much in the previous years um, but this year he really just seemed like beat up by his time in Philadelphia. Like he just wanted to get out of the dugout. Um, and I think that when you start doing that and there's that disinterest there, you know, you, you kind of, you distance yourself from some of the data. Cause I do believe had he followed the data at times, he wouldn't be making some of the decisions that he had made uh, that, that ultimately really hurt this team and hurt, you know, hurt this season's uh, success rate. And then you have, you know, what Topper's doing right now, you know, which is, rightly so it's a feel-out process right like at this point you almost kind of have to let things play out a little longer and allow that to be like your your baseline like he almost has to let guys fail and let guys yeah. get into a slump uh that way he can kind of understand them and i think one of the biggest things and I, I mean i'm i'm someone who is i very much so believe that you have to be on the same page with the people who are putting you in a position to either succeed or fail. Yeah. Um, so the communication that clearly lacked with Joe Girardi and the confidence that clearly lacked, especially with the younger guys. Um, I think that when you take a listen to 